Please welcome Iggy Azalea. Woo! Oh! Yay! Yay! Hi. I Hi. love it. How are you guys? Are you wearing latex today? Or is that leather? Um, what is that? Something kind of shiny. It's very shiny. <laughs> Have a seat. We're on the radio. Watch your Ooh. language. Watch your foul language. Oh, I will, darling. I haven't seen you since we were on a float in a parade. I know, and it was so much fun. I'm just making sure. Sorry. She's on. She's I on told her phone. everybody that I'm here. <laughs> I know. See, you're experiencing what I'm experiencing. If you need uh, to sure. send, if you need something out, send something out on social media and talk at the same time. It's very difficult. Yeah, yeah you're multitasking. Yeah, yep. I told everybody. Okay, there. <laughs> nice. All right. Hey, Sounds good, good to see you. Sorry, I had to make sure. I had to make sure. How was the next game last night? Um, it was really good. I was sad that they lost because I really thought that the Knicks had that till the very end. But that's why we all watch the fourth quarter, isn't it? <laughs> well, we some, yeah, it, that's the fun thing. Sometimes people leave before the fourth quarter because they think it's ugh, there's no way they're going to win. Oh, no. Then, I'm well experienced in fourth quarters and what can happen in them. Right. <laughs> Over the years, so I know to stick around. So and last time we saw it, Iggy, we were on a float with her. That's we right. were. Mm -hmm. It was that, a lot of fun. That was a ton of fun. <laughs> yeah. And But a lot has happened since then. Yeah. We, well, maybe that was two years ago now? It was two years yeah. ago. Yeah. We can have flies. You just tweeted out you wanted to do it again. And I do want to do it again. <laughs> Is that your first time on a float? Uh, yes, period. Yeah, I feel like everyone should be on a float at some point in their life. That yeah. like needs to be a bucket list item. because It the was best fun. I feel like parade. next time we need to plan our float together, though, because I feel like... We should have had matching outfits. And, I tried. Yeah, we need to we need to, to communicate beforehand. I don't know. I think you took away some of my shine on the float a little bit. Well, that's because we didn't have matching outfits, darling. So. Okay, okay. You, you really cut it out. Every time I tried to wave at the crowd, she would jump in front of it. It'd be fabulous. That's okay. It's in your nature. It's all Sorry. good. Sorry. Oh. In my so, nature. No, it's in your nature to shine. There's well, nothing wrong with that. Never apologize for that. <laughs> You're a superstar. So let's talk about what are you eating? I hear it. A cough drop. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to chew it so it's over with. <laughs> are you? Have you? The flu and all of the horrible sicknesses have been going around. Have you caught any of that, or have you sort of been able to stay under the radar? Uh, it's up for debate. I've been in California. It's 85 degrees. I've been having pool parties. I got to Chicago. Uh, I was here yesterday in New York. I was in Chicago the day before. I j just woke up this morning and I cannot stop sneezing. Yeah. Oh, so. oh great. Well, thanks for sitting so close to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you should kiss her. If you could just spray <laughs> a sneeze on me, that'd be awesome. I don't feel sick or anything yet, but I just had a sneeze attack in the car and then I thought, cough drop. <laughs> well, that, I, I love the smell of, of halls in the morning. It's all good. Here's some Kleenex. Thank uh, I won't touch it. That would wipe my makeup off my face. So I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> oh she would, she'd rather have mucus coming out her nose than wipe off her makeup. <laughs> okay. And she she drop kicked a Kleenex box across the room. Absolutely not. All right, no, the makeup. You got up early for that. because you look, This you look, beat is not getting wiped off my face. You look nothing. fabulous. Nothing. Well, let's talk about music, Iggy. Let's I talk mean, about it. Yeah, it. It's been a while since, uh, yes. since we've, I, I think. It's been a long time. Switch? See, I love Switch. I downloaded oh, it. As soon as I, got, I was just playing it in the room like five minutes ago. The oh, unedited version, though. Of course. <laughs> the unedited version. Yeah, yeah the non-radio version with, with the, the swears. You know, the, the, the word. Oh, yeah. yeah. I did say, oh, I forget that I like to cuss a lot. Well, see, that's the thing. <laughs> Iggy, in real life, we all we all use you know every word needed to use you know to in the vocabulary i know yeah, but some words have to be used in this in this world in radio it's just like we're, we're we're sort of squelched i know from I using know. the best words ever i'm good at it on the radio though i'm just not good at it in the studio cuz i'm not thinking about that kind of thing i'm just thinking about writing my music but right. funnily enough my new song savior actually has not one cuss word in it and i didn't even do that on purpose it just didn't end up having any and a it, lot of people were asking me when it came out Where's the explicit uh, version? I was like, there isn't one. They felt cheated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think they felt a little cheated. I was like, no, there's just you can't have a song about like a higher power and then like have a bunch of cuss words. It just, just doesn't work. Yeah, that makes sense. So you sat, you sat down, Quavo's in 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 on the in the circle, and you both. You, it, it wasn't like let's agree just not to use any foul language because it is about a higher higher power. <laughs> well, when say when Savior was played to Quavo, it was like ninety percent finished so i think he had an idea that the cussing was out mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and he added some words to the hook the, the hook was kind of already like a little bit together and he added his kind of finishing touch but no cuss words when you're uh when you're uh working with another artist mm -hmm. 
you're playing music you want them to be a part of, or they play music to you that they want you to be a part of. Yeah. Is there ever a, you want to be polite, but you're thinking, ah, I don't know. I just don't think this is me. This isn't my voice. Is that a difficult conversation to have to another with another artist? Uh, I've never really had that. I mean, because I write my own raps, so I never get a song where they're like, and this is the part you'd be singing, and you're like, I don't hear that being my voice Mm -hmm. because it's always just a blank section like and here's where you do you (laughs) you know um so not necessarily uh sometimes i'll hear a song and be like that's a great song but i just don't think it's for me or it's not what i'm going with but i really never have that happen with people that i'm genuinely friends with i will do the song no matter what just because we're friends but with me and Quavo, it definitely was never any situations like that. We had been going back and forth, just like playing music to each other about um, what I'm working on for my album, what he's working on for his album, just as friends. And um, it was never really a situation where it was like, let's collaborate. It was like, what are you doing? What am I doing? And we just were sending each other stuff back and forth for weeks. And then there was another song and this song that he was like, I really like these. Um, I want to do something on both of these. And I was like, okay, that's cool, but... You, you, we can't have like an Iggy Quavo collaboration album. So which are we going to pick? And we picked Savior, which was kind of the um, like wild card song to pick because the other one was definitely like really rap and more what you'd expect from both of us. So we both kind of collectively decided we wanted to pick the unexpected collaboration in Savior, and I think that was the right choice. You know, when the, when the song started floating around, and I started seeing pictures of you on social media, mm-hmm. I, you were smiling and looking, you were glowing in all these photos. You look, yeah. wherever you were doing, wherever you were, you look, you're in a good space. Yeah, I am. Is, is this, I would be way happier space, this Iggy? morning if it wasn't just that I woke up coughing, but I'm in a really good place. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry. If you're going to cough, be happy about your coughing. No, no, never apologize for coughing. <laughs> yeah. No, but I mean, uh, are you are you good space, Iggy, right now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. I wouldn't come out with new music um, if I wasn't because I'm just I'm really blessed and lucky in my life that I don't I don't have to come and do this if I don't want to. I only do it purely because I really love love making music. And so unless I feel like I have something that I want to say, I'm lucky enough to be at a point in my life where I have that, that choice. I don't have to come and like slug it out and pay my bills i i've been smart and i i'm here because i feel like i'm i'm ready to miss mentally i'm in a good place i really love the record and i just want to share it with everyone so that's why i've been having so much fun with it it's good to hear that because yeah. when you hear a song from an artist you kind of wonder do what, what, do they want to do this Is, well, i mean you hear all the stories about artists who released albums that they were contractually obligated to release yeah. and so they can you made hear the it? album bad on purpose bethany or... have you ever heard an album you said you know what i think they were content, contractually obligated to do that album because it's crap have you ever heard <laughs> that from anyone yes and also you hear songs on an album that you're like that's a filler song like yeah. they don't really <laughs> love that song so it's nice to know that you're doing something because you have something to say and you want to be doing yeah it. yeah of course i mean filler songs are difficult though every Every song can't be a single. <laughs> <laughs> but, there's a, but there's a difference between putting a song on your album because you like it versus yeah, just yeah. having like I know like, what I you mean. I know what you mean. We don't, we don't feel Iggy's inspired. She just put an album out. It has three songs on it. <laughs> Do you ever though like put a song on your album and you know right away that that's not going to be a single? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, when I'm constructing an album, every time I how don't dare think you? Every song is going to be a single, but that's the way a body of work is supposed to mm-hmm. be. I think thinking of Single, 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 single is a terrible way to construct a body of work as an artist. You should never be thinking about it like that. You should be making your, you know, I guess, story of however many songs and then hopefully picking from that what can work as a single if if it is that you would like a radio hit. Some people don't even want that and there are albums that don't have particular single songs. Right. Um, and then I, for me, I always just do that. And if at the end I feel like nothing sticks out as the surefire, this is the hit, then I might take a few more weeks or month or however long to take to play my album to other people and say, hey, do you have anything that you think fits within this but maybe is a bit more commercialized? And that's I just want you to process. keep yeah. one thing in mind. Whenever you record a song, would Elvis like this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's all you have to think about. Okay, I, think I, it, I will think about it. Iggy Azalea is <laughs> here, by the way. we got to play Savior.
uh, in just a second. We, we're definitely going to play. Don't play it yet. What are you doing? Oh, Stop it. I was uh, <laughs> what the hell are you doing? I'm ready. Back off. I have two things about you personally I want to bring up. First of all, okay. I think about the year you moved from overseas to Florida, to Miami. Yes, to Miami. How long ago was that? And look look at where you were there and look at where you are now. What a, it what was, a, what a spectrum of life. It was July 4th, 2016, where in 2018... No, 2006. 2006. Oh my God, sorry. You just lost 10 years. <laughs> Hello. Look, July 4th, 2006. Yes. Take yourself back to Iggy Azalea, Miami. I just arrived, 2006, to mm. where you are now. Yeah. Look at everything that's happened to you between now and then. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I, I, beyond the success, you know, I came here as a kid and I'm a, a, a woman now. People stopped telling me that I can do stupid stuff and say, well, she's young, I've noticed lately. <laughs> right. <laughs> Now they're just like, no. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm too old to do dumb stuff anymore. Get away with it. Don't say that. Get it together. That's not true. No. When you're my age, you can do dumb stuff again. I'm about to turn 28. That's too old for that excuse. Oh, please, honey. responsible. These jeans are 28 years old. (laughs) And secondly, uh, not that I'm prying, but I must ask, are you celebrating National Singles Day? Because that's today. Well, you know what? I don't really celebrate either. Valentine or Singles right. Day. I, I, I guess I kind of like to just more make fun and like um, make jokes about both of them. Okay. But I'm not really a celebrator <laughs> yeah. of either. But if you're asking me which category I'm in, I'm in the Singles Day category. Yeah. Yeah. When we were in college, my one friend would decorate for Halloween on Valentine's Day. Really? And she would put up cobwebs and all kinds of crazy things because she didn't want anything to do with Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. So she did Halloween again. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Why not? Because we were talking about that earlier. Because Bethany is... What she's, does one do on Singles Day? You act relieved. <laughs> you that eat it's your, over? You eat your own pizza. You no, don't you have to act s- relieved that you're single. Because being in a relationship is exhausting and tiring and filled with too much effort. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much sums it up, right? A little bit? It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of effort. Yeah, it's a lot of effort, but it's a lot of fun I, when it's going good. Yeah, I know. Of course, when it's going good. But if you're, if, if you're in the studio or if you're riding with people, do you, yeah. do you really want a distraction? Because it, isn't it great just to have just you? you, you you're you dating your music. You're, you're... I mean, honestly, I you know I was in a relationship for many years, and I, I genuinely never felt like that was a distraction for me being in the studio at all. Anybody that... I date that has a problem with me going to the studio from four o'clock in the afternoon to eleven o'clock in the morning the next day is not right. somebody we're going to be going on many dates with. So, and what about your songwriting? Not a though? distraction. What about your songwriting? I mean, there are so many artists. I mean, you can hear their album and you can hear exactly what they've been through in the past year because it's heartbreak, heartbreak. Yeah, I yeah, hate yeah, you. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I mean, do, is it a good thing to go through these emotional, trying times in your life so you have the for, honesty for- to talk about in your music? For me, it has been, but I honestly, as an artist, I don't think people think of like my, um, my music is generally not really talking about relationships and those things. And right. this single savior is probably the first time I've ever really beyond, you know, a record here or there where I really hated someone. Um, I, 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 I kind of stray away from talking about those things. You, you don't really hear me talk about boys or my heartbreak a lot in my albums. It's just not something that I like gravitate towards. As a woman, I always like to write songs that make us feel beautiful and powerful and sexy and sassy. And like those are the kind of records I write. So for me, a relationship never really had much of a bearing on the kind of music that I made. But as I've gotten older and wanted to grow as an artist of course you want to include some of your life experience and my last relationship was really my first real serious um adult relationship where I had those things to talk about because before that I had I I was in my early 20s or teenage years you know what you date a guy for maybe four or five months and it's over and um that's a whole different kind of like heartbreak or turmoil or experience or or change in in lifestyle when those things end so for me this time around um I felt like I did want to talk about those things and that had changed for me but I still have like my usual back catalog of of very sassy things to we say like sassy. sassy is the word of the day um yeah that's never going to change but it's never really 
had a bearing before on past albums where I'm like, man, I wish I wasn't completely happy in my relationship because I have nothing to write about. Because right. that was never originally <laughs> yeah. well, what I wrote yeah. about. Oh, that's a relief with. to hear that. Yeah. yeah. So, so you sort of made fun of it in a joking way a second ago, but... As you are getting older and you're, you're you're in this new phase of womanhood, are you like are you loving being a woman? Being a woman, how? In- yeah, I do like being a woman. It's great. I would not change it. Well, well please don't. <laughs> I mean, you could if you I, wanted. I could. You could. But but being a woman, I mean, what does being a woman mean to you today? Uh, today, right now, for me, I you know, I just think. For me, the difference between me in my early 20s and then me in my later 20s, I just feel um, much more unapologetic about saying what I want in my in my personal life, in my dating life, in my friendships, in my business, and or publicly even. And uh, I just feel a lot more unapologetic about it. But in the same respect, I think I'm a lot more cautious about the things I say and the way that I say them to people because in the past I've just I would just kind of say things with utter disregard and be like bleh but also in this but but at the same time be really worried about what people thought of me or see red flags in relationships and purposely ignore them or want the guy to think I'm cool because I think he's cooler than me maybe or you know things that you do when you're younger that now I'm just I feel straight away like "Mm, no I know what I want I'm not looking for that I'm not looking for those things and it's much much easier for me to vocalize that straight away and just be like "Mm, it's this isn't working for me whether it's um, you know, a song, a mix, a video clip, me go- collaborating with something or going on a date and you said something that I fundamentally am like, oh, no, oh, he thinks this and I think that. No, you know, so I just think I've gotten a lot better at um, being nicer about the way I deliver my messages <laughs> um, when I disagree with people, but also being OK with disagreeing with people. That's, That's good. perfect. So yeah. you're, you're in a great space, I must yeah. assume. So, Iggy, before we play Savior, tell us what sparked Savior. Where is it from? What is it? Oh, uh, you know what? Savior is like such an ad- epic adventure of a song. Um, because I wrote, I started writing it the end of 2016. We're in 2018, if you're unaware. <laughs> uh, so that's quite a long time. I started writing it. I just moved into my new house um, after my breakup and I was kind of like weirdly in between management and a bunch of stuff was just kind of up in the air where I was like, what am I doing? I had my production company with the NBC and so I was really at a crossroads where I was like, am I going to keep making music? Do I even like this? Because I'm, I love music, but I'm getting so much hate. Is this able to be enjoyable for me? With everything that's going on, so you were questioning um, your future in the music in the music world. A I was questioning bit. if I felt like it was something that could make me happy doing because it was so much negativity. I I never questioned if I loved making music, but I was like, am I able to make this? When you're successful, you you go and you grind and you do this every single day. And I was like, am I able to emotionally, just as a person, endure this much? criticism and negativity every day that everybody faces not just me when you're a public person because you think you're ready for it you're not and I was like am I really able to do this number one every day can I emotionally handle going back and doing this do I want to do this I have other things that I love to do um, like writing scripts I have a production company so I was like there are other outlets to this do do I want to keep doing this is this going to get better what does my life look like I don't live with someone anymore I have a completely different house and everything just looked very different for me in my life and there was part of me that just was kind of like uh, I give up I just want to sit on the couch and I want to watch television and I want to eat pizza all day for like six months and I, I don't know I want this great life that I feel like I had but I don't want that life back. But I, I want something different. I want it, to, but I, I still want that amount of happiness. But how do I get not the same thing? But, but how do I get back happy again? What does that look like? Or is it just give up? And I, I don't think it's give up. I think that you've got to try to find your new routine. So that's how kind of the song began with me writing and talking about like 
you know, what's who who is it that I'm going to meet in life that's going to give me this happiness? Have I met this person before already? Have I not? When am I going to find them? When is, when is it going to happen to me? When am I going to be happy? And I wrote the song. And then about a year later, I came back to it and I rewrote a lot of parts of it because I was in a much different place. And I felt like I was happy and I did have my routine again. And I felt like, mm, you know what, Iggy? I don't think you were ever looking for somebody to make you happy. I think you just needed to take it day by day and find your own happiness or find it in something else, whether it's God or a higher power or you finding a hobby or a new routine or a new outlook or friends or whatever it is that helps you get to that place. That to me is like what the savior is in the song, not necessarily a person. Um, And so it just is a great song to me because it has such a cool narrative where you can really hear like you somebody starts out thinking one way which is kind of how we all feel when you have a massive change like somebody else help me and it and it kind of um ends up with you figuring out like actually nobody else is gonna like swoop in and save you you got to figure that out on your own which is true to this very day and there you go yeah thanks for opening up to us today oh no of course time for another cough cough drop Time for another cup drop. Iggy Azalea, <laughs> the singles, of course, Savior, Quavo. When's the album coming out? It's going to come out in summer, of course, because it's called Surviving the Summer. So okay, perfect. It cannot come out in oh, the Oh, so we, we, have, we have a title. It's Surviving the Summer, definitely, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, okay, we done. do. It's, it's Iggy done. Azalea. Here we go.